Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity and thank you for coming. This topic has been in my mind from last five to six years when I was in London. What was happening is I am involved with special need kids but most of the time it was all about rehabilitation. But nothing at all was about preventing. Now we start with the child when they come to know, the parents come to know that my child has special needs. But there's nothing about mothers. There's nothing about fathers. There's nothing about genes. The food, the diet, the thought process. There's nothing at all, anything in allopathy. Now it is coming to a process of, now the doctors are realizing that the food plays a very big role and the positive thinking. When we talk about health, the WHO organization, World Health Organization, has three categories so far. To say that this is perfect health, one is mental, one physical, and one social. But the fourth part we are not thinking about is spirituality. What do you mean by spirituality? How, how, do you, how would you recognize with spirituality? You connect with the divine. Okay. Another? To keep ourselves calm and uh, happy, I think, that the help of spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, I think, like in Western country, they need a lot of psychiatrists help right. because of his spirituality and family we don't in India especially Asian countries don't need that kind mm -hmm. of thing have so much not blind faith but faith any kind of faith in God connect okay. with your own self yes. perfect your self. Yeah. You, you don't know where God is have you ever found God no but you know yourself but we never learn to engage ourselves so when somebody becomes pregnant, who is the first person who knows that they're pregnant? Herself. Herself. You don't even need to go to the doctor. You would know that there is some change that is happening in the body before you even do the test. So when the intuition of a mother is there, where does that come from? You realize it can't be our vision. Because you, at that moment, there's some connectivity there which is taking you back to yourself unknowingly. There's something living that is happening. So, when that happens, you have to make sure. We are talking about preventative, okay? We're not talking about afterwards. Because you can help people who are going through their pregnancy, and this is the reason why I'm raising this issue. You have to make sure that the breathing of that lady is deep breathing. You have to tell her to do meditation. Because once you breathe in, there is a lot of regeneration that is happening in your body. A lot of toxins are removed. Whether it is your mental, physical, spiritual, anything you talk about, that toxins are removed. When you sleep, now because of the meditation, you would be much more calmer. Because today's life has so many stimulus, especially the women before, they used to stay at home, they used to look up to the family, they used to do little things and there was a lot of supporting hands. There was a community there. Maybe in Gujarat, there is a strong community sense and I always say that to Ashish. I said, in Gujarat, there is always a sense of community. But even that is a little bit destroyed due to the nuclear idea or maybe the kids traveling away. Okay, so their kids would not have the support system that the mother had. Okay, so what is happening is the woman is going through all that, the hormonal changes, everything, 
she's going all by herself. Men have very little understanding of those hormonal changes. They have a terrifying experience of pregnancy. They believe that is, oh God, there's going to be another mood swings and oh God, they're going to have this problem. And, but if they understand what's really going on in a woman's body, they would respect the changes that are coming in them. A man realizes only when the child is coming in their arms. That's when they understand the fatherhood. But the fatherhood should be actually understood when it is conceived. And that is very, very important to have that. So once that happens, what happens is the hormones of a woman is much more stabilized. Because she has a support from the people that she's living with. So the mental health of that lady is very steady. So she's also breathing. The biggest example I would say is, say that you're angry. Anyone, okay? When you're angry, what is your breathing pattern? Short breath. Fast, okay. So when you're um, breathing really fast, what happens? Not enough oxygen. Right. When that happens, again, you become aggressive. Plus, the shortness of the breath Imagine having a child in your stomach and the breath is not going in, almost to the stomach. There's very little supply of oxygen. So when somebody is always in stress, a chronic uh, stress position, what's going to happen? Shallow bleeding and not going to the child. Yes. Plus the food. एक वस्तु हो तो हमें समझ अबे समझी सके, but food, what about that? Are you giving the mother the food that she requires? Are we thinking about weight at that moment of time? Nowadays, uh, I think pregnant mothers think up more about weight. But that's the reason why autism CP children are increasing. One in five kids have autism, whether you know it or not. And all of them are related to neurons. All of them are related to the nervous system. So there is something that is happening wrong in the society today. What you visualizing up when you're watching TV, you're watching very aggressive things. You hardly watch anything. If you look at today's movies, you look at today's TV, you look at video games, you look at anything which is going on, everything is so much <coughs> aggressive. You know, it's not even common for your eyes. The graphics that are taking place, it's not really good for your brain either. Somebody who's watching, obviously it's going through to what you were thinking, what you're visualizing, it is affecting the children. So when you, as when doctor was saying that we are, you know, putting the children in front of the mobile, we're putting them in front of the TV, we're doing it very wrong, actually. Just so that you could have a little time to yourself, and I think we all require that, I'm not saying no. But you could do so many other things. You actually disconnecting from your child. If you have special need child and you put them and you do your own thing, a lot of times we do that because women have to cook, clean, you know, look after the house or business or anything that is happening. We disconnect. We think, okay, let them sit at least for five minutes. I'm not going to have, you know, a cry. So we need to we need to change that. You could you know do activities which are bonding, which is relaxing for you. Especially when we talk about this, we're talking about swimming. Now, when you are taking your child for swimming, there's two things happening. 
your muscles are getting relaxed due to the water. The water massages your muscles. And second thing, your child is also developing at the same time the connectivity with you. So you need to think of activities where you can connect with your child. And that is the most important thing for any special child, is the connectivity. You will see your child not being aggressive when you're sleeping with him and you're hugging him. Because the child feels your energy, they feels the love. If you're going to bring them to a clinic and you're going to leave them there and think, okay, yeah, the child is going to get better, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry to break that down. Choose your doctor very carefully. Choose your words that you speak around that child very, very, very carefully. You think that he's not understanding, he's understanding that you're very disappointed with him. He understands that he's very disappointing to his parents. <laughs>